Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. Today, we have an incredible opportunity to take an in-depth look at this beautiful 1959 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. As with all of my reviews, I'm gonna cover all of the ins and outs and take this thing on a thorough drive. Before we get started, I'd like to extend a huge thanks to Diamondback Classic Radials for providing this opportunity. If you're looking for some of the highest quality white wall and custom tire applications for your stock restoration or resto mod, definitely give them a call. I've got their contact info down in the description box below. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. The inherent dignity, grace, and beauty that became a hallmark of Cadillac styling in the past took a giant leap forward for 1959. There is, for example, all of the impressive stature which only a motor car of adequate length and wheelbase can offer. There's the appearance of solid, enduring beauty from every angle, and an unmistakable mantle of quality which marked Cadillac at the time as the standard of the world. There were 13 models offered by Cadillac in 59, including a variety of sedans and coupes, a couple of convertibles, and even a limousine. The Coupe de Ville in particular built upon the Series 62 two-door hardtop and had an original starting price of $5,252. Aside from exterior badging, the two cars are practically indistinguishable. It's the inside that really set the two apart, as the DeVille had more standard equipment, higher quality materials, and additional comfort amenities. The level of innovations and technology offered by these cars were incredible. They're one of the best examples of an automaker striving for perfection. Only the best of the best went into these cars. The way it looks and feels is unlike anything else you'll experience from any other American automaker at the time. Highlighting the elegance and refinements of the 59 Cadillac as viewed from the front are the reflective beauty of concave projectiles at each intersecting line of the wide aluminum grille. The use of straight horizontal lines from the leading edge of the hood and headlamp bezels through the top and center grille bars to the massive lower bumper bar add a feeling of strength and rigidity, while enhancing the apparent width of the car. The new, lower and wider hood extends to the front fender crown moldings, thus virtually eliminating any visible juncture of the hood and fenders. The four headlamp system and the four parking lamps continue the strong horizontal motif of the front end while providing excellent illumination. The outer parking lamps also serve as turn signal lights. The inner pair could be replaced with optionally available fog lamps. There's an impression of motion throughout Cadillac's new styling for 59. The new Vista panoramic windshield provided unsurpassed visibility, more than that of any competitor. On Cadillac Coupe and four-window sedan models, the windshield was slightly smaller but it still offered class-leading visibility. As beautiful as it was functional, the windshield extends around into the sides of the car as well as curves up into the roof lines. As a further aid to good visibility, the windshield pillars slant rearward from the roof line to eliminate the customary blind spot associated with traditional forward slanting windshield pillars. 
As I mentioned, there was a lot of variety across the 59 Cadillac lineup, especially when it came to the sedans. One of the easiest ways to distinguish between them was the shape of the rear window. For example, the six-window sedans had a curved rear window similar to the coupe. The four-window sedans, commonly referred to as the flat tops, had a rear drip rail and a wraparound rear window. The Fleetwood 75 sedan and limousine were more about classic simplicity and increased privacy. Therefore, they had a more restrained, rectangular design of the rear window with a sharply sculpted drop at the rear of the roof line. The sweeping lines of beauty of the 59 Cadillac culminate in gracefully tapered chrome-edged rear fender fins with twin Nassau-like contours containing the projectile-shaped rear lenses of the tail, stop, and turn signal lamps. They're easily seen from the sides for extra safety. Rear fins became an increasingly popular design feature in the late 50s, but Cadillac went all out in designing the biggest fins ever fitted to a production car. They were subsequently downsized with the introduction of the 1960 models. Furthering the uninterrupted sweeping continuity of lines across the car's side profile and enhancing the road-hugging appearance of the car were new demountable rear wheel opening covers. At the outer extremities of the massive rear bumper, with its grilled upper portion, are large chrome-framed backup lamps. The deck lid itself slopes smoothly from the rear window base molding to the top grill bar, relieved only by a graduated center crease line. When it comes to exterior colors, Cadillac had an incredibly wide palette to choose from. It's kind of funny when you look at most new cars today only having a handful of options to choose from. Cadillac's palette for 59 included 20 different options. This example is finished in ebony. Dimensions of the 59 Coupe de Ville include an overall length of 225 inches, a wheelbase length of 130 inches, an overall width of 80.3 inches, and a height of 54.1 inches. Depending on the level of options the car is equipped with, Coupe de Ville's had a curb weight of around 4,800 pounds. All of Cadillac's models for 59 were fitted with 15 by 6 inch slotted disc steel wheels with full wheel covers. The standard covers for the Coupe de Ville feature a ribbed concave outer ring circling a raised hub insert with a new silver and white Cadillac medallion. Four-ply tubeless tires with a section width of 8 inches were standard. When equipped with white wall tires, the section width grew slightly to 8.2 inches. The tires on this car are Auburn Deluxe Radial Tires from Diamondback Classic Radials. They feature a timeless design that includes a pie crust edge, square tread shoulder, and a period correct tread pattern. It basically has the appearance of an old-school bias ply with full radial construction and the characteristics and performance you'd expect from a 21st century radial. The Auburn Deluxe Radial is a brand new mold, not a reproduction. Designed for 40s, 50s, and early 60s vehicles, they also have the appropriate nomenclature on the sidewall and range in sizes from 5.60-15 all the way to 7.50-16. When it came to the braking system for 59 Cadillacs, you had four-wheel power-assisted self-energizing hydraulic drum brakes with each drum having a diameter of 12 inches and 2.5 and inch wide linings. A pretty substantial setup for the time. In 59, the push rod from the brake pedal directly activated the brake booster versus the previously used linkage setup. This assured even smoother operation thanks to less friction points as well as improved pedal response for an added measure of safety in sudden traffic emergencies. The parking brake is a foot-activated lever on the left side of the interior beneath the dash. Cadillac's concentric gear-type hydraulic power steering system provided many new features for 59, 
while retaining its famous feel of the road, which was an important safety factor in judging safe speeds on curves or slippery road surfaces. Among the refinements was a new rotary valve, which brought power assistance to the driver more quickly and with considerably less pull on the steering wheel. Even the amount of arm movement required in steering was minimized by reducing the steering wheel diameter from 18 to 17 inches, and by reducing the overall steering ratio from 19.5 to 18.9 to 1. A flexible coupling in the steering shaft prevented the transmission of vibration, noise, and road shocks to the steering wheel, thus helping to reduce fatigue on longer trips. The turning circle of this car measured about 48.5 feet. Cadillac's iconic magic carpet ride stemmed from an advanced suspension design. The front suspension consisted of upper and lower control arms with spherical joints, helical coil springs, hydraulic direct acting shock absorbers, and a stabilizer bar. The rear suspension was a unique Cadillac four-link design with helical coil springs and hydraulic direct-acting inverted V-mounted shock absorbers. The lower control arms worked the up-and-down motions of the rear axle housing and prevented fore-and-aft motion. The coil springs were mounted between the lower control arms and the frame and served to cushion the vertical motions of the car, allowing for a lower spring rate and a softer ride when compared to traditional leaf springs. An upper control yoke above the rear axle housing was mounted to the frame at two points and to the top of the rear axle housing by a spherical joint. The yoke prevented sideways motions of the axle and provided a high roll center for less outward lean and a more level ride. New lower rear axle ratios for 59 required fewer engine revolutions per mile, contending to a quieter ride and more economical performance. The standard rear axle ratio on most models was 2.94. A 3.21 ratio was available depending on how the car was equipped. Cadillac began offering a four-corner air suspension in 1957 on the Eldorado Brome. It basically replaced the coil springs with air springs. In 59, the air suspension was standard on the Eldorado models and optionally available on the rest of the models. With their variable rate, the air springs provided the soft cushioning you'd want for slight road imperfections and progressively firmer resistance to maintain a superior ride even over the roughest of roads. The air suspension also featured automatic load leveling, so no matter if the car was loaded down with passengers or luggage, the car would always maintain its proper ride height. A manual airlift control system allowed you to raise the car on demand if additional ground clearance was needed. The air suspension was further refined for 59 to provide a slower ride frequency with slower body motions to further increase riding comfort. Modifications to the front air spring pistons provided an improved ride balance and eliminated front end lift during extreme acceleration. This car in particular had the standard coil sprung suspension and rode like an absolute dream. Cadillac's objective in designing their new engines for 59 was to produce the finest, best balanced power plants in the luxury car field. This meant engines with adequate power to move a big car through traffic with effortless ease and flexibility to carry it swiftly up mountain grades without a trace of hesitation, and to perform long hauls at highway speeds with no audible sign of its presence. Of course, in doing that, it was also imperative to deliver a satisfying surge of power, along with the utmost dependability, durability, and economy. Cadillac's engines for 59 touted more power per pound of engine weight than that of any other competitive American motor car. There were two engines offered, including a 325 horsepower V8 and a 345 horsepower V8. They were, for all intents and purposes, the same engine, with the primary difference being carburation. 
Some of the big engineering highlights for 59 included a larger displacement, higher compression, new tapered exhaust valves, a freer flowing intake manifold, new bottom end components, better warm up performance and smoother, steadier idling. There were also improvements to the fuel, cooling, oiling, ignition and electrical systems. The engines were constructed using a cast iron block with cast iron cylinder heads, a steel intake manifold with steel valve covers, and a true dual steel exhaust system. They featured an overhead valve design with two valves per cylinder, hydraulic flat tappet valve lifters, and a displacement of 390 cubic inches. An oil filter was included as standard to minimize wear by filtering minute abrasive particles from the oil. The standard engine developed 325 horsepower at 4,800 RPM and 430 pound-feet of torque at 3,100 RPM. Fuel was delivered through a mechanical fuel pump that was driven off the camshaft and a standard four-barrel downdraft carburetor. The forward barrels were smaller and acted as the primaries to feed the engine economically during idling and at normal cruising speeds. When pressing the accelerator further, as for rapid acceleration or climbing steep hills, the larger secondary barrels would open to permit a greater volume of air to be drawn into the intake manifold for greater power. The carburetor also benefited from an automatic choke, which worked off of heat transfer from the intake manifold. Instead of a traditional oil bath air cleaner, the Cadillac engines featured a dry pack air filter. Internally, the engines contained aluminum alloy pistons, forged steel connecting rods, a forged steel crankshaft, and a chain driven steel camshaft. The compression ratio was an impressive 10.5 to 1. On the Eldorado, Barretts, Seville, and Brougham models, you got a unique triple dual barrel carburetor setup instead of the single four barrel unit. It was an optional extra on all other models and boosted the 390's output to 345 horsepower at 4,800 RPM and 435 pound-feet of torque at 3,400 RPM. The central carburetor was used for all normal operations such as starting, idling, and cruising for the most efficiency. If you press the accelerator beyond 75% of its travel, the other two carburetors would open simultaneously for an even greater rush of power. For 59, the gas filler cap was concealed behind a pivoted center cessation of the decorative grill panel above the rear bumper. It's a really cool feature that not only is incredibly functional, but it really adds to the cleanliness of the car's overall design. Readily available from either side, it minimizes the possibility of a pump hose being rubbed across the car's finish. The total fuel capacity was 21 gallons. The Cadillac Hydromatic Automatic Transmission offered many advantages over competitive transmissions. For example, it provided a step gear design which automatically permitted the transmission to select the most efficient gear, first, second, third, or fourth to meet the performance demands of the driver. The left hand drive position provides four forward gear ratios, automatically selected by the transmission to provide maximum efficiency for all normal driving requirements. Extra safety when passing another car on the highway or for accelerating out of an emergency traffic situation was provided by fast step-down acceleration. The step-down was accomplished simply by depressing the accelerator all the way to the floor. At slower speeds, the step-down was accomplished by only partially depressing the accelerator. The right-hand drive position locks out fourth gear up to about 75 miles per hour. This results in fast, immediate acceleration without step-down and was preferred by many owners when driving in city traffic. Engine braking is provided in both drive ranges and in low range. Moderate braking in the left-hand drive position for level country, increased braking in the right-hand drive position for ordinary hills, and firm positive braking in low range for safe descents of steep mountain grades. 
many competitive transmissions by providing only two choices of engine braking could offer too much or too little to properly cope with the situation encountered by the driver. The park position holds the car securely on the steepest grades. Since the engine can be started with the selector in the park position, it eliminates the necessity of holding the car with the brakes when starting the engine on hills or inclines. Beneath the brilliant beauty and styling of the 59 Cadillac body is a basic design and construction but with one purpose in mind, providing the Cadillac driver and their passengers with an even greater degree of the safety, comfort, quiet and convenience which had contributed so much to Cadillac's reputation as the standard of the world. For starters, a new, stronger, tubular center X-frame provided increased torsional rigidity when compared to conventional frame types. The body provided a ring of steel that surrounded the passenger compartment. The rigid steel floor, reinforced by ribbed channeled sections, was welded to strongly reinforced double box girder rocker panels and vertical side pillars. The all-steel top with its double-ribbed steel bows and box girder roof rails was all welded into one assembly. Box girder reinforced cowl and dash panels along with integral rear quarter panels and rear fenders complete the sturdy framework to protect all occupants. The instrument panel with its bright and brushed chrome and satin black inserts achieves a jewel-like appearance while providing maximum legibility of all of the instruments and controls. The more compact instrument cluster for 59 is directly in front of the driver for instant reference. It's a simple cluster that includes a horizontal speedometer, high beam indicator, generator indicator light, fuel gauge, brake warning light, oil pressure light, trunk lock warning light, turn signal indicators, odometer and temperature indicator. A new convenience feature for 59 permitted lighting the interior of the car simply by turning the headlamp control knob all the way to the left. Equal convenience for both the driver and passenger is provided by separate front compartment ashtrays and lighters and by the central location of the spacious glove compartment. The top of the safety padded instrument panel has a fine grained glare resistant Elasco Fab covering that's color harmonized to the interior. Upholstery selections for the Coupe de Ville included a new nylon Coronado cloth with a ribbed pattern of gleaming Lurex threads and a choice of silver or turquoise against a black background, or in rose or green metallic threads with a harmonizing Coronado cloth background.
There was also a new block patterned Camden cloth, softer in finish, with tones in fawn, gray, or blue. Bolsters and trim of fine grain leathers were color harmonized to the fabrics. Seat cushions and seat backs with their 10 inch wide center armrests are styled in smart 2.5 inch piping with a single row of recessed buttons. The accoutrements of the Coupe de Ville provided a full measure of luxury and convenience for the driver and passengers, while the bright and brushed chrome for control knobs and trim add highlights of gleaming beauty. Complementing this elegant interior decor is loop pile nylon blend carpeting covering the lower portions of the cowl sidewall, door panels, and the floor. For all 59 Cadillacs that were equipped with an electrically powered fore and aft seat adjuster, an electrically powered vertical and seat angle adjuster was available as an extra cost option. Power windows were also available. If equipped, all four windows may be raised or lowered by the driver from the controls on the left hand instrument panel extension, while single switches were provided for convenient individual window operation by passengers. A Cadillac introduced safety and convenience feature was the inside controlled outside rearview mirror. It enabled the driver to adjust the mirror exactly to suit their needs simply by moving a lever on the inside driver's door. Additional available features included electric door locks, shaded and tinted Easy Eye glass, Cadillac's Autronic Eye automatic high beam control system, and even cruise control. If equipped with cruise control, the medallion on the left side of the dash would be replaced by a special control knob to set your speed. The transistorized signal-seeking pre-selector radio offers three choices of tuning. Manual, push button for favorite stations, or a selector bar. The left hand knob turns the set on or off, adjusts the volume, and has an outer ring for regulating bass or treble tones. The right hand knob is for manual tuning and for adjusting the antenna, which is recessed into the right front fender. Pushing in on the knob extends the antenna, pulling out on the knob retracts the antenna. The outer ring on the right hand knob can also be used to redirect the sound through the front or rear speakers or equalize it between both speakers. Plentiful insulation, including a combination of fiberglass, asphalt impregnated paper, insulating board, jute, and carpet helped keep the car cooler in the summer, free of drafts and cold in the winter, and quieter all year round. Like I mentioned earlier, Cadillac provided unsurpassed visibility with its Vista panoramic windshield, which curves up into the roof line as well as around into the sides. The rear window of the Coupe de Ville is similarly curved at the top and sides for good rearward visibility. That being said, every window of a Cadillac was polished safety plate glass that relieved the driver and passengers of the distorted view and possible eye strain and fatigue that was sometimes associated with ordinary safety glass at the time. A new 3-speed electric windshield wiper and washer system was standard to meet every requirement from a mild rain to a heavy downpour. Long flexible blades and arms of offset cams provided excellent wiping from the center of the windshield well into around the curved side areas. Pushing the washer button directs a jet of water onto each side of the windshield and operates the wiper blades at slow speeds until turned off by the driver. A standard ventilation system directed fresh outside air to the right side, left side, or both sides of the front compartment by moving either or both slide levers located below the instrument cluster at the left of the steering column. With the optional Cadillac heater installed, the lower slide lever at the right of the steering column just below the instrument cluster heated the interior to your desired warmth. Not only does the front compartment get heated, but thanks to a new set of floor ducting with outlets terminating under the front seat cushions, you had better distribution of heat to the rear compartment and less heat loss versus the previously used door ducting. The upper slide lever directs cooler air to the windshield for ventilation or heated air for defogging or de-icing the glass. A toggle switch controls blower fan speed. 
Additional controlled draft-free ventilation was provided by crank-type front venti panes. Electrically powered front venti panes were optional on models equipped with electric window regulators. Cadillac also offered an air conditioning system. It included a recirculating system that allowed you to control how much outside air entered the cabin. After the air was cooled, it would be dispersed through three air vents across the instrument panel, with a portion of the cooled air being directed to the floor area. If equipped, the controls would be located to the left of the steering column below the instrument cluster. AC equipped cars would also have a 45 amp air cooled high capacity generator to protect against excessive battery drain along with a 7 blade fan and a full fan shroud to ensure efficient engine cooling even with all of the engine driven accessories in use. Even without having four doors, the Coupe de Ville offered a huge back seat that could easily sit up to three people, just like the front seat. So yes, this car can seat up to six people. It's also pretty easy to climb into the back seat with how the front seat backrests tilt forward and away for added clearance. If you didn't have someone sitting in the middle, you can even take advantage of the fold down armrest which, along with the large armrests in the side panels, provided one of the most relaxing spaces in the automotive industry at the time. The only way it got better was in the larger sedans and limousines. In addition to having significantly more rear seat space, you had extra options to really take things over the top, such as independent radio controls, auxiliary seating, and independent air conditioning controls. Standard rear seat amenities on the Coupe de Ville included fully trimmed door panels, polished inside roof rail and rear window trim, overhead illumination and coat hooks on either side of the roof, a center armrest and ashtrays in the side panels. With having power windows, the individual controls are incorporated into the ashtray tram. There's ample room in the spacious luggage compartment of the 59 Cadillacs to accommodate all sorts of luggage types, including golf clubs. Insulation and a rubber deck lid seal protected the interior of the trunk from dust and moisture. One cool feature is the design of the deck lid hinges. They don't project into the luggage area like some competitors. Counterbalanced springs simplify lifting or lowering the deck lid. The deck lid lock is key released, permitting one hand operation, a convenience particularly appreciated at the time by anyone with an armful of packages. You can also opt for a power deck lid lock. If equipped, you would simply push a button inside the glove box to unlock the deck lid. When the deck lid was brought back down, a powered actuator would automatically close it the rest of the way and lock it securely. The car's spare tire was originally mounted horizontally on the right side of the trunk floor and covered by a flat metal disc. An additional carpeted covering for the wheel and tire was optionally available. The luggage compartment was also originally fitted with a rich textured vinyl coated fabric that was color keyed to the car's interior for beauty of appearance and protection of finer luggage. It was not only durable but easy to clean. Well everyone, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the in-depth look at this 1959 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. Be sure to stay tuned next time and leave a like down below because it really helps the videos a lot. And if you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so because of course there's always a lot more where that came from. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.